Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be learning about what causes the size of the atom's electron cloud, and we're going to learn about the periodic table trends in atomic size. Before we get into the lesson, just a quick little reminder, um, elements that are in the same group, groups are my vertical columns, elements that are in the same group, just a reminder, they have the same valence electron configuration, therefore the same number of valence electrons, and because they have the same number of valence electrons, elements in that group will have not the same, but similar chemical and physical properties. Okay, so all the elements in group one, this is group one, are all our S1s, 1S1, 2S1, 3S1, in their outer shell, they're S1s. Because they have the same valence electron configuration, they'll have the same number of valence electrons. Therefore, once again, they'll have similar, not the same, chemical and physical properties. One of the things we've been discussing is that the way the periodic table, the modern periodic table is arranged, that we end up seeing similarities within these groups. And that's why we call them families. So the name for that is called periodic law. That's when a pattern emerges, similarities, that's based upon the arrangement of the periodic table. And the periodic table is arranged based upon the atomic number going left and right. And vertically, it's arranged by elements having the same valence electron configuration. The focus of today is going to be looking at atomic size and determining what happens in a group. Groups are vertically. What happens to my electron cloud as I go down a column? Does it get larger or smaller? And the same way, what happens when I go left to right on the periodic table? That's called the period trend. Periods go left and right. And so what happens to the size of my electron cloud as I go left and right? And also what happens to the size of my electron cloud when I go up and down. Here's a quick snapshot of a periodic table with electron clouds shown. Now these are obviously not the exact size of electron clouds, but just approximate, like an artist rendition of what electron cloud would be like. But I do want you to see that the largest electron clouds are located over here. This is where my biggest electron clouds are located. And I also want you to check it out. And I think it's pretty obvious that in general, the smallest electron clouds are located up in this corner. And in general, my atoms get larger going down a group. All right, every single group, my electrons are getting larger as I travel down, getting larger as I travel down. And I'm not gonna do this for every single column, but I think the point is pretty clear. My electron clouds get larger going down a group. And now, I also want you to see, going from left to right, let's go up to the period number two, my electrons are getting larger going in this direction. They're continuing, they get larger, larger, and larger. And that is true for every single period. My electron clouds get larger. So one of the driving points I want to leave you here with is the, the trend you're going to see here. Electrons, electron clouds get larger going down, and they also get larger going to the left. This is kind of the similar uh, periodic table, except the transition metals in the middle of the periodic table, the D block have been removed. Once again, the point is, I do want you to follow the arrows that I already have printed on the screen, but my electron cloud is getting bigger, bigger, and bigger, and bigger as I go down the periodic table. And once again, it's getting bigger, bigger, bigger as I go from right to the left in the periodic table. The next several slides is going to focus on what causes the size increase going down and what causes the size increase as I go from right to left on the periodic table. This is called the atomic size group trend. And I just want to call this out the groups. Remember, the groups are my vertical columns. So a group trend is what's going to happen to my atom as I go down a group from top to bottom. Okay, and as you saw in the previous slide, the atoms get bigger going down, and the number one reason, right, the number one reason is because we are adding more energy levels. These layers on my electron cloud are energy levels. This would represent energy level one, one, and two. And as I go down to the next energy level, one, two, three, you're continuing to add more energy levels. So my atom is clearly getting big as I go down my periodic table for the number one reason I'm simply adding more energy levels. The next reason why my atom is getting bigger is because I have increased shielding by inner or core electrons. Now, shielding is caused 
when the proton is trying to attract my electron on the outer energy level. The problem is though, I have electrons on the core, on the first energy level that are swarming all around. And as they swim around, they interfere, okay? Shielding is another way I could say interference. Interference by those inner or core electrons. That kind of takes away from the proton electron attraction. So as you can see here, my protons are in the middle, my outer shell electrons are farther away. There is this attraction between the two, but the problem is I have all these electrons on the second energy level that are going around and around in circles. And the same with these guys here on the first energy levels, they're swarming all around and they're really causing interference, all right? And so therefore my outer electron here is said to be shielded by the inner one and two energy levels. As I add more energy levels, I have more shielding. So in the first example here, where I have one energy level, there is no shielding. Why is that? There are no core electrons. Shielding is only done by core electrons. Okay, so in the second example, yes, there is shielding. Shielding is done by the first energy level. The second one is the outer shell. In the third example here, I have two energy levels that are providing shielding or interference for the outer energy level. And the last reason why my atom gets bigger going down a group is because my attraction between protons and electrons is an attraction going on, but the problem is that it is decreasing, all right? And it's decreasing mainly due to this distance. My protons and electrons are pretty close by here. There's a very strong attraction between the two. As I go down a group, I add more energy levels. My electrons on the outer edge are definitely farther away. And as I continue to go down, my distance between the nucleus and the perimeter of my cloud is increasing. And as you increase your distance, you decrease your attraction. Just once again, there is clearly a negative, positive attraction going on here. These guys want to be pulled close together. So the farther they are apart, the less strong is their attraction. Okay, once again, kind of in review here. Yeah, my atom gets bigger going down a group for three reasons. Three reasons were adding more energy levels. One energy level, two energy levels, three energy levels. I'm not going to continue on, but I think you get the, the picture. I also have sh increased shielding as I go down by the inner or core electrons. And lastly, there is a decrease in attraction due to the distance away from the nucleus. A period trend is a left-right trend. So we saw before that my atoms were getting bigger as I went from my left side of the periodic table to the right side. And this is a period trend. Periods are my horizontal rows. My atom or my electron cloud is getting smaller as I go to the right. There is only one reason for this. And the word is increase nuclear charge. Nuclear charge is another way of saying the number of protons. All right, the protons are really strong, all right? So as I go towards the right on my periodic table, and I'm gonna just draw a mini periodic table right here. As I go this way, my protons are increasing. And as my protons increase, they attract my electrons a lot stronger. When they attract electrons a lot stronger, they pull the electron cloud in tighter and making a smaller electron cloud. So once again, I'm getting a smaller atom as I go to the right. Why? Because I'm adding more protons. More protons means more nuclear charge. That increased nuclear charge increases my proton to electron attraction, making a smaller electron cloud. So as you see over here, 
Lithium is element number three. This is element number four. Wow, that kind of went crazy there. As I increase from three protons to four protons, all the way over to 10 protons over here, my electron cloud is gonna shrink in size. I also want you to notice, and I'm gonna draw a picture right here, and it's not gonna be a great picture, but I am, on period number two, I have two energy levels. And as I go across period number two, I am not adding new energy levels. All I'm doing is filling electrons on the same exact energy level. So I'm not adding anything new here. So my electron cloud is not getting larger by any means. It's kind of like I'm putting more occupants on the same floor of a hotel. The distance away from the nucleus is not getting bigger as I add these electrons. And in fact, it's the opposite. It's getting smaller because I'm adding more protons to the nucleus. And that results in an increased pull towards the middle. It's gonna pull the electrons towards the positive core. So my atomic size trends on a periodic table, the trends we see in summary are my atoms get larger going to the left across my periods and larger going down a group from top to bottom. Okay guys, we've got a couple of assessment questions to make sure that you understood the lesson. I think these are very important. Please do your best to try, uh, try to solve these. If you need to, press the pause button, take a second and answer these, and I'll come right back with the answer, okay? So use the pause button if you're intending on using uh, these assessment questions as a true assessment of if you've learned this lesson. All right, the first question. Shielding is based on the number of, here we go, press pause. Shielding is based on the number of core energy levels. Once again, here we go. There was no shielding when I had one energy level because there's no core electrons. Well, as I add more core electrons, I have shielding now by my inner core. And as I continue to add electrons, and this should really be, I don't want to confuse you here, this should be going down my periodic table. My picture was kind of showing it going across. It wasn't what I intended to do. But as I go down the group, I am adding more core energy levels. The outer one is considered my valence energy level. So I do want to erase these. I don't want to confuse you at all. So the shielding is based on the number of core energy levels. Which atom has more shielding by inner or core electrons? Take two seconds, give it a shot. What I've done is drawn pictures of the number of energy levels in those, elect in those atoms. Fluorine has two energy levels, therefore it only has one core energy level to provide shielding. Bromine has four energy levels. Therefore, it has three energy levels to provide shielding from the nucleus. So which atom has more shielding? That is gonna be bromine. This question is tricky. Please take, your, take time to answer correctly. Once again, shielding is caused by inner or core energy levels. Which atom has more shielding by the core electrons? Press pause, give it a shot. Nitrogen and fluorine are both located on period two. That's the second row of the periodic table. When you're located on the second row of the periodic table, all you're doing is placing electrons on the exact same energy level. So really, in this case, this is a trick question. Which atom has more shielding? Neither has more shielding. They both have the same shielding. They both have the same one energy level as your core. That core will shield the outer electrons or cause interference. It's a trick question. So neither. They're both tied. They both have the same exact shielding. So I'm going to write down the answer here. Same. Same shielding. Which atom has more attraction to its valence electrons? Press pause. Come back in a second. Fluorine is going to be the one that has more attraction to its outer electrons, mainly because it's a small atom. The smaller you are, the, smaller you are, the closer your nucleus is to your outer or your valence electrons. So which atom has more attraction? Fluorine. Why? Because fluorine is a smaller atom. Smaller atoms, that means your protons and your electrons 
are closer, more attracted. Which atom has more attraction to its valence electrons? Once again, this is going to be based upon size here. Nitrogen is farther to the left than fluorine, therefore it's larger. All right, we just went over the period trends. Nitrogen is to the left, therefore the larger atoms are to the left. So once again, fluorine is going to win in this case. It is definitely a smaller atom. Smaller atoms have their protons closer to the outer valence electrons. Stronger attraction. The nuclear charge was a word that I threw up at you before. Okay, Nuclear charge is based on the number of... protons. Nuclear charge is the same thing as saying protons. So the nuclear charge is a positive charge. I often write this as P plus, indicating yes, the protons have a charge. They're located in the nucleus, therefore that's where I get the word nuclear charge. Which atom has the greater nuclear charge? Well, if nuclear charge is based on protons, the question is which atom has more protons? And the answer is going to be fluorine. Fluorine has more protons. Fluorine has nine protons. It's definitely going to have a greater nuclear charge. No okay, great. Which atom is larger? Once again, we're coming down to our atomic size now. And it, the way to answer these questions is really, if you know your atomic size increases on your periodic table going to the left and going downward, which atom is larger? The real question is, which atom is either farther to left or farther down? Well, they're both located over in the second to last row or second to last column over here. All right, so fluorine is located right there and bromine is gonna be located underneath it. So bromine is definitely farther down the periodic table. Atoms increase going down. So the answer is bromine is the larger atom. Why? The number one reason why is because bromine has more of these. And you'll recall these are energy levels. Bromine has four energy levels compared to fluorine's two energy levels. Which atom is larger, nitrogen or fluorine? Once again, this comes down to our periodic table and what we now know. We know the atoms increase in size going that way and they increase in size going this way. On the second row of the periodic table, you'll see nitrogen right here, and you'll see fluorine right there. Which one is farther to the left is larger? In this case, that's gonna be nitrogen. Now, I could also say which one is smaller, okay? Nitrogen is larger because it has fewer protons in its nucleus, meaning it has less nuclear charge. Wow, excuse me for that, guys. Uh, did not expect that to happen. Less of a nuclear charge. And lastly, I just want you to be able to take a periodic table and say, draw me the trends for atomic size. And I want you to be able to say, my atomic size gets bigger going this way. I'm now comfortable knowing that my atom gets larger as I go from the right side to the left side in any period. And also it gets larger as I go down all right, so as I go down my periodic table, the atomic size always gets bigger, and as I go from right to left, my atomic size will get bigger as well. That's all, guys. Hope it was helpful. Enjoy.